Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well a while back we did a video of how to create a button. When you click on it, it's going to reveal a section. And it's very popular, but we've had a lot of questions on it. The code that we had here, initially when you click on it, you have to click on it twice to reveal the section. And once you've done that, it's going to toggle on and off with a single click. But a lot of people didn't like that initial double click to open the tab. So thanks to the viewers of this channel, and thank you all for su submitting a few little fixes for this. We've got a few options for you today where we can toggle it with a single click. So let's get started. We're going to be using a little bit of code today from W3 Schools to take to save some time. And this is the original code that we used in our first project. And I'll put this URL below. OK, well, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is we'll go in and we'll delete this little button that I've got here and we'll start from scratch. So I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. OK, once enabled, I'm going to go down. I'm going to delete my little button there. And I'm going to delete this section and we'll start from scratch. So here's our W3 Schools code. I'm going to use a bit of HTML here for a button. I don't need the div because we've got our own div. And I'm going to use the code here. So I've got this button here. I'm going to control C to copy. I'm going to go back to my Divi. And I'm going to add a code module to do this today. There's our code module. Paste that button code in there. And as you can see, that button's turned up. Of course, it doesn't do anything because we haven't got anything for it to do yet. And what the button's actually saying is there's our button. When we click on it on click, it's going to activate my function, which we haven't created yet, which is a script. So let's get that script in here. We'll go back to W3 schools and we'll copy this and let's have a little look at it. It's saying function my function. So this is a function with the name of my function. It's going to get an element by ID. So that's the section we want to hide or show, and it's got to be called my div. It's got to have an ID of my lowercase div uppercase. You can make it your own. You can change it to your own unique name there if you want. I'm going to leave it just as it is. And then here it's saying if it's displayed, hide it. If it's not displayed, show it. And if it is showed and you click again, hide it again. So we're going to use that for the moment. We're going to switch it around just a little bit to fix that little double click issue in the beginning. So control C to copy. Now this is script. So as it's script, we've got to wrap it in some script tags. And to do that, let's go down a couple left pointy bracket, the word script and right pointy bracket. As soon as I put the right pointy bracket in the closing tag, will appear there, which is exactly the same with a forward slash in front of the script there. Separate them and in between the two, we can paste that bit of code that we copied. OK, so we've got a button and when we click on it, it's going to hide or show an element called my div. So let's create an element called my div. In this case, it's going to be a section, but it could be a module or anything you wanted. OK, well, let's just save this. Now what we'll do is create a new section. I've got some saved in my library. Let's just pop in gallery four. And it's four little images there. I'll just change the background a little bit so you can separate it from our button section there. So I'm going to go into it, a little blue tab there, go to background or the content tab. Let's make it black or a dark gray of some sort. That's fine. OK, we now need to give it the ID or that name of my div. So in the advanced tab, we want to go down to CSS ID and classes. And we want to put it in the ID tab, not the class tab, the ID. That's important. And it's case sensitive. And it was my lowercase and div uppercase div. OK. So we've now got a section here these four little images and it's called my div it has an ID of my div and when we click on this button it should toggle my div off and on so let's save this and see what it's going to actually do 
Exit the visual builder. Okay, there's our little button, there's our section. Initially it's there. When I click on it, it's going to disappear. But a lot of times you're going to want this section to be at, actually invisible at first. Then when you click on the button, you want it to appear. So we know we've given it a name of my div. So we can use a bit of code in the theme customizer to have it hidden initially. So let's go to our theme customizer. For anybody that doesn't know how to get to the additional CSS panel, it's go to your dashboard, appearance, customize. You can also get, go to Divi and theme customizer. And right at the bottom, you'll find additional CSS here. Now we gave that section a CSS ID of my div. All IDs have to have a hashtag in front of them. And then the name, my div. Now I want it to be invisible on page load. So I'm going to open and close some curly brackets. And any CSS I write here, I'll put down below for you. You can copy and paste it if you wish. I'm going to say display. None. So on page load, you shouldn't be able to see it. Let's publish this. And we'll go back to our page. Now when I refresh this page, you should still see the button. But this little section right here should have disappeared. And we should still see our contact form. So let's refresh. There we go, we just got the button. Now when I click on it, nothing. But if I click again, it's going to happen. And that's where we were at the end of the last video. It works absolutely perfectly after that. But let's get rid of this double click. And it's really easy. And uh, thanks again to those that provided these answers for us. Let's enable the Visual Builder. Let's go down and modify this code. basically all we're going to do is everywhere it says none we're going to change it to block everywhere it says block we're going to change it to none so let's take our block i'm going to copy that i'm going to paste it where it says none here and make sure you don't lop off any of those inverted commas that's really important if you do it won't work and we want to say none right there okay so we've effectively switch that all around so now let's save and exit the visual builder now when we click on it it opens up first time so if you're just looking to fix that that's as far as you need to go with this video so to style our button I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna give it a class name Right after button, I'm going to put my cursor, I'm going to put a space, I'm going to write the word class, equals, open and close some inverted commas, and inside, give it the name that you want to give it. I'm going to give mine BT for button, RV for reveal. It's kind of shorthand. You, you can call yours anything you want, but it wants to be unique, and it wants to mean something to you. Okay, now we've actually done that, we can target it with some CSS code to style it. Let's just save our changes here and exit the Visual Builder. I'm using Google Chrome with the great inspector tools. Most browsers have this nowadays, but if yours doesn't, Chrome is a free download. I'm going to just right click on here and inspect it. And there's our code right there. Here's our button. And it's got the class of BTRV that we just gave it. So let's click on this. And in the element style, we can start to style it. Let's roll it up so we can see what we're doing. There's our button. First thing I want to do is give it a background. And for argument's sake, I'll just call it blue for a moment. I'll change it to my logo color in a minute, I think. Okay, I want it to be a little bit fatter and a little wider. So I'll do that with padding. Padding. I think top and bottom I'll give 10 pixels, left and right I think I gave it 20 pixels before, that looked okay, that's alright. Now the actual font size and colour, I want it about 16 pixels, I want it to be white so we can see it, so let's say font size, 16 pixels, and you can put a 
font family in if you want at the moment this is just using the default font of the theme I want that to be white so it stands out a bit better so let's say color white which is FFF hexadecimal great I don't want that border on there there's a little black border I'm not sure if you can see it or not so let's drop down one more I'm going to say border none I should take that border away great that's looking more like the button that I want I'm going to give it slightly rounded corners so I'm going to say border radius dash radius and I'm going to give it say five pixels if you want it to be a really rounded button give it a large amount or even 50 percent if you give it 50 pixels you're going to end up with a sort of pill shaped button like that which is fairly in vogue at the moment but that's entirely up to you okay that button's pretty much looking like I want it so I'm going to just copy all of this now control C I'm going to go back to my theme customizer and make it permanent so we gave our button a class name all class names have a dot or a period in front and it was BT for button RV for reveal let's open and close some curly brackets and inside we can paste that bit of code and publish it to make it permanent now I did want to use that logo color for the actual color so I've got my color picker here let's grab that color and I'll change that blue to the hex number for our logo there and then on hover I'd like to use the light blue color there so the button changes color so I'm just going to copy this class name I'm going to drop down and we'll create a hover state so right after the V make sure there's no gap we'll put a colon and the word hover H-O-V-E-R then we can now set some code for what we want to happen when we hover over it and all I want to do is change that background color from that dark blue to the light blue of the logo right there so I'll copy that bit and let's get this hex color right here and just replace that now the time it takes to go from the dark to the light is going to be pretty much instant but I want to slow it down for a bit of drama because it, to me it just looks better so I'm going to use transition duration for this and it's prompted us so I'll just click on that and I'm going to make it about three quarters of a second 0.75 seconds 0.75 s semicolon that'll make it a lot more graceful and just to finish off I gave it a fixed width of 150 pix so I want to make sure the button is 150 as well because we gave that 150 to the actual div that it's in so I'm going to say width 150 pix let's publish this and we'll go back to our page and yeah, refresh we should have a new color on that button there we go and it's 150 wide and when I hover over it it's changing to our light blue of our logo up there great and it's still opening our section okay for the next bit now we want to create two other sections and add a couple of buttons that we want to open for those so let's enable the visual builder again I'm going to drag this button over here for the first one I'm actually going to go in and we know that's our gallery section so I'm going to say gallery so where it says click me in the white writing right there I say gallery great okay well let's copy this button now and create another one going to hit the duplicate two little squares there drag one of them over it doesn't matter which one because they're identical now let's create a new section that we want to pop up new section I think I've got another one in the library there there's some little click boxes great and let's give this an ID And again you can make it whatever you want but I'm going to sort of go with that 
same theme that we've been using make sure you put an id not a class like i just did there and it's my lowercase div uppercase and i'm going to call this one my div b and i'm going to save this and we'll call this one click boxes and we've got to change it because remember we called this my div b so let's go into this one and we're going to call it click box click boxes but that's not too big for the button no, that's fine because we gave it a fixed width now we need to change this to my div b and I'm also going to change the function name itself. So button class bitree on click my function. I'm going to say my function b. I'm just going to put a b on the end of there between the n and the round bracket there. Now let's rinse and repeat. I'm going to copy this button one more time. I'm going to drag it over. Let's create a new section. Should have another one in there, hopefully. Here's that little section. Let's change the background slightly on that again so we can discern it from the button section. Let's make it blue. That's fine. And again, I want to go over. I want to give this a custom CSS ID. We'll call this one my div capital C. We'll save that going to go into the button remember we call this one my div C and when you edit these make sure you don't cut off those little inverted commas there because that will stop it from working and I'm going to change the function name also from B to C and you want to make sure you do it just down below my function C let's check that we did that correctly on that second one there. I think I was talking and failed to do that probably. Yep, my function B right there. Okay, we've now got three little buttons that when we click on them, they should open three different sections. So let's save our changes. Exit the Visual Builder. Okay, and by default, all of our sections are actually visible. So let's hide all of our sections now so we can bring them back in with our button click. Let's go back to our customizer. And we know what the class name is. It's my div. In fact, I can just add it to these. All I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that class name, control C. I'm going to put a comma after it. I'm going to paste it after it. Change it to B another comma paste it again and change it to C now all those sections should be hidden on page load so let's publish this we'll go to our page and we'll refresh and that gallery and the other sections should disappear when we refresh there we go great let's bring them back so there's our gallery on one click. Here's our little click boxes on another click. And this should say something else, but I think it's a gallery. And there's that last gallery. So there you go, guys. That's how to toggle sections on and off in a single button click using the fantastic Divi theme. And again, thanks to all those people that contributed down below in the comments. Wouldn't have been able to do this without you. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.